Okay, everybody, welcome to the Saturday stream. So we got a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of things to cover. So let's just jump right in. So just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we're going to ask the question, or at, we need to ask the question, is this the time to sell? And for for everybody who's who's here right now or is going to be watching this later, I can't give you that advice. I'm not a financial advisor, and nobody should be talking to you in that way, especially online, YouTube, or anybody who's on TV because they don't know your specific situation and what you want to do and what your goals are. However, for me, these are the things that I'm actually looking at. So if you're curious to see like when exactly or what I'm doing as far as the indicators that uh, will leverage me or push me into selling, holding, accumulating or whatnot, there are two videos to watch. One of those is uh, when I'm selling, why and when or 80%. The other one is the half and half method. And those are under the crypto critical videos, links in the description. And they're uh, just right there of all my videos uh, links in the description for those two as well. So the big question then is I'm going to start with the charts and go into the macro and the things behind it and all the things that we can kind of uh, to take a look at as far as like where this comes from, because the charts are great, but I, I think they only tell a certain part of the story. Some people will just say it's charts only, but I think there's more information to be gleaned if we do a deeper dive. So this, of course, stealing some from Ben, uh, historic risk levels. And this was interesting because when we take a look at this, I was kind of, I forgot about this part is that historic risk levels, and we're taking a look at Bitcoin, we're also going to take a look at the entire altcoin market cap. And you need to see that over here, it's done a pretty good job as far as like risk level timeframes, 2013 and pretty much nailed it. 2017 did a really great job. 2021, not too bad, February or March, uh, when Bitcoin was around 57. Now it went up 10,000 after that, but I mean, hey, that's not too bad. And then when I took a look at this, I had for totally that this had blown by me, but uh, I'm always taking a look at these risk levels and going, okay, at 0 0.8, when things are getting overheated, maybe that's time I'm going to sell or take some profits. But in reality, what we should have taken a look at was over anything over 0 0.7. And people had talked about this. And again, I just kind of went past me. And this is why we need to keep taking a look at when we could potentially take profits and sell because we are so used to buying, buying the dip and buying and buying and buying. So that means that we're, we are fantastic buyers, but we are horrible sellers and profit takers. It's like when you just buy forever, the, the sell muscle just atrophies and you just forget to use it. And before you know it, you're in this blow off bull market and you can't sell because you're like, all I know what to do is buy. So this is important that we take a look at this, I feel. So anyhow, taking a look at this, this part right here, you can see that on 11th of March, 2024, we crossed over the 0 0.7 mark. I mean, we actually went above that on 6th, 7th of March or so in 2024. And I'd like to remind you that during that time frame, as far as like the 11th of March, that was $10,000 ago. That was when Bitcoin was 72, 72.5 almost. Now we're looking at 62.8 or whatever it is right now. I couldn't really tell you. But that's uh, that might have been time to take some profits. I know people would say, what are you, stupid? That's that's ridiculous. Why would you take profits in that situation? Because, of course, this was right before the halving. And, of course, the halving, everybody talks about how great it is and, and everything go to the moon right after. Didn't happen. And, of course, we take a look at historically, that's not how it works out. So, again, for whatever you want to do, these are just things that we take a look at to go, maybe that would have been a good time. And then, of course, right now, if we take a look at it, we're at 0 0.619. So for me, it's not a good idea to take profits in Bitcoin. What about altcoins? What's great about this is I can take a look at the uh, altcoin market cap or AMC. And it's even worse. It's at uh, 0 0.5. So right now, probably not a good idea to take any profits as far as altcoins. And then, of course, again, if we scroll back 31st of March 2024, we can see that might have been a good time to actually take a little bit off the table and de-risk yourself. But it didn't even hit 0 0.7, so eh, maybe not. So there's that one part that I take a look at. But you might say to yourself, well, Rob, I want something that I can take a look at right now because maybe I haven't signed up for Ben's course or Ben's uh, site. Go to look into Bitcoin. Here's one that I've, I just discovered about a month ago, the Bitcoin Cycle Master. And when I took a look at this one, I'm like, all right, this did pretty good as well. And you can just say what, what this does is it takes a look at a combination of on-chain metrics, including coin values, days destroyed, and terminal price. And it pretty much outlines it for you right here. Makes things pretty re relatively simple. And again, there's links in the description for looking to Bitcoin, but it's just looking to Bitcoin.com. And we can see it did a pretty good job. I mean, it didn't nail 2013. 2017 was a little bit of a laggard. 
And then when we take a look here, as far as 2021, 20, did pretty good. I mean, again, February, March, when Bitcoin is 56,000. But once you get to this red line, you're like, well, it's not too bad, actually. But if we blow this up and take a look at what's happening here, it's important to realize that these indicators by themselves, there's only so much they can do. So you really need to really put together more indicators. So if I take a look at this, this purple line right here is the fair market value. And you can see right here that it's saying that, hey, Bitcoin at 63,000 is above the fair market value. If we take a look at the regression bands, as far as the trend line, we can see that actually over here, we are below the fair market value. So again, it's all where you think things actually fall on this, but I will say this Bitcoin cycle master did a impressive job calling the bottoms. And what I mean by this is I actually, you zoom in or I zoomed in when it actually hit this green line right here. And when did it hit the green line? <laughs> Funny enough, November 11th or November 9th when Bitcoin is 15,000, nailed it. And then it kind of just said over here, this is a good time to accumulate. Then of course we start to get those red areas. It's time to start thinking about selling. Obviously they're not there right now. And then if we actually overlay this, to be fair, as far as the risk levels, yeah, this is not what I want. Let me hide all these. Let's take a look at the risk levels, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 in the cycles. And we can see that, you know, in all honesty, yeah, called it over here too. 9th November, 2022, 21st November, somewhere in that range is when everything bottomed out. When Bitcoin was 15.7, 15.75. So yeah, I can see that. And then of course, if we want to see the tops, all right. Let me hide all. Let's put in these and these. Ba, 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 ba. Not too bad. So right now we're pretty much playing in the middle and that would just be me just doing a quick checkup to see if this is the time to sell. For me, it's not. But there may be some of you out there that are going, but Rob, what about selling man go away? What about the macro factors? And I have to tell you, I do think it's gonna get worse. And I'm gonna show you exactly why that is. So first of all, right now we can see that today, market cap is 2.4. I can see it going to 2.3, 2.2, and who knows? It might go below you know, 2 trillion. But again, this isn't really concern me because as things go down, I will, pro I will continue to buy, but then as they start to go up and they overheat, I'll take some profits like I've done before. I get a lot of flack for taking profits, but it seems to work okay. So anyhow, you can just see that we're pretty much in a red zone. But as a reminder, I know people will say, but but, but the halving, what the heck happened? Same thing happened last time. If we can see here, this is the last halving in May 2020. I think it was May 11th, May 12th, 2020, somewhere around there. These are monthly candles. Then we can see just in May, which we were going into April 2024, the next month after this halving, it was a red month. So just expect next month to be worse. I'm not saying it will be, but there's some other things that could play into this. Then of course, the month after that was pretty good. Then it was kind of undecided. Then we went down and then so on and so forth. But the general consensus is that uh, this right now is, I think, a pretty fair accumulation zone. I don't know about for Bitcoin. Take a look at the video we did on that just a couple of days ago. But I think it's more for altcoins and some uh, maybe some risky plays. It's up to you. But here's the thing that's uh, concerning. First of all, Republic First Bank was uh, collapsed, seized by regulators. And this was, I like how they put this over here on Forbes, the first bank collapse of 2024. <laughs> meaning, <laughs> I, I shouldn't laugh, but meaning there's gonna be some more banks collapses. That's just how it is. However, not as bad as you think. This is April 26. Republic First had, uh, this is the bank that collapsed, had roughly $6 billion in assets and $4 billion in deposits in January, according to the FDIC. Fulton Bank reached an agreement with regulators to take over Republic's first 32 branches in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey, which will reopen under the Fulton Bank name with the Pennsylvania-based bank assuming substantially all of the deposits and purchases, sustainability, substantially all of the assets. So that's what's great about the, tr the TradFi. I mean, when FTX goes under, sorry, Charlie, uh, there was massive Ponzi scheme and we used your funds to buy all of our employees uh, their nice condos in the Bahamas. So sorry. And then people aren't going to get everything back. But here, FDIC insured and things like that, it actually has worked out reasonably well. 
Good thing in America, we can print things out of thin air. Am I right? So I see more bank collapses coming. Also, there was this issue that came up a couple of days ago, which we talked about. And I said, this is dumb and not to worry. Uh, but people are still going to talk. I still get this question. So President Biden proposed a 44.6 capital gains tax, also includes a 25% tax on unrealized gains for high net worth individuals. And I said, look, uh, if they're going to keep trotting this out, it was the same thing last year and the same thing before that. So it's the same thing. It always gets shot down. And if they're going to do unrealized gains for taxes, they have to do unrealized losses. They're not doing that. So everybody who's concerned about it, just it's going to be OK. That'll never pass. Snowball's chance in hell. And then lastly, stagflation. And this is where I think things could go awry, because I, I know people will sometimes say macro doesn't really matter for crypto because it is a Bitcoin's a hedge against inflation and it is a flight to safety. First of all, Larry Fink from BlackRock said it's a flight to quality, not really a flight to safety. And I think this is if uh, we start to see more of a stagflation, we're going to see more problems, but it, it's not going to be a thing. And I'll tell you why. So this is from Business Insider. Two experts outline U.S. economy ends up caught in stagflation. Why? Well, Thursday's GDP reading was slumped against expectations, growing at an annualized 1.6 rate. You're like, that's not too bad. Well, it's really bad if all the experts and the people that were uh, assessing the situation said, no, no, no. We're going to be a 2.5% GDP growth. So now we're at 1.6%. And if we see another quarter, that's depending on what the government wants to label this. So I'm not even going to go into there. But also, so you had a reduction in the GDP. And you also had a, a rise in inflation. So the, the PCE came out, which is the inflation metric favored by the Federal Reserve. And that was 2.8% against what we conservatively thought would be 2.7%. So again, you've got inflation going up, although I might say minorly, it is maybe the canary in the coal mine, I'm not for sure. And then of course the GDP uh, being slumped at 1.6%. And that led me to my last point on this. And I'm gonna say people don't really don't get too concerned because things might get rough and it might get worse because of the macro environment. Bitcoin could come out and people could actually go in that direction. I'm not for sure so much. I still think that uh, when people see that everything is going to hell in a handbasket, they tend to be a little bit more conservative. They don't really think things through and that's just how it is. But it's about a timing issue. And this is actually, we had talked about this. I, I made this this slideshow, I want to say nine months ago, it was nine months to a year, it was it was last year. And it was just from a subscriber who made a comment in one of my videos. And Trad said, it looks like we'll be in a recession next year. Again, this is in 2023. No way the four year cycle will be of any significance. And it might just discourage prevent people from investing in crypto next year. Then they would have to wait eight years for another bull market close to the last crypto would die if this happens and i got to tell you on some of these points i can say yeah that, that could be true if we see a recession stagflation we're gonna have some problems but let me show you some data points that i think will make sense to you right here so first of all when recessions do hit and they you know depending on how on the severity they last on average 10 months and you can see we took a look at from Everything from back in the 60s to 2007, 2009 to the uh, most, well, 80s. And you just kind of average out, that's 10 months. So I said, God, this was a year ago. Because I said, okay, well, if this happens, you're looking at <clears throat> next year, potentially July 2024 being a recession start. Could happen. And I said, if that happens, if we go from July 2024 recession start and it's 10 months on average, where does that put us? That puts us into May 2025. And what have we always talked about this channel? And it's it's eerie how this works out as far as the numbers. It's because I still believe in the four-year cycles. It just seems like these things, and people will say, well, you know, there was a 
there was a pandemic and that's why it, it, it really went down. That's what, and of course the quantitative easing and that's what really pushed into it. Yes, that's true. It was, but it still happened. And there's always these things that just keep coming up and coming up. And if we take a look at this, 10 months or so, you have to remember there is a huge difference between the economy and the markets. What do I mean by this? If we go back in time and we take a look at the recession from the 1990s, from the time that there was what was considered a recession to when we come out of the, came out of the recession, it was five months. But the recession to the market bottoms was three and a half months. If we take a look at 2000 to 2002, from the time of the beginning of the recession to the market bottom was six months and then six months and then two months after that, that was when we officially came out of the recession, the GDP increased. If we take a look at the Great Recession, 2007 to 2009, that one from a recession to market bottom took 15 months, but then there was then to actually, for the markets to rebound, and for us to actually say, okay, now we're doing good. It was three months more. So again, as a reminder, and of course this was in, this was uh, 2020 when we had a very short recession because the money printer came on. That's what I think is gonna save us this time. It was uh, one month and it was less than one month. So again, if we go into recession, just remember 10 months, but the markets recover faster than the economy. And I think that would put us right in the right place at the right time. Now I could all be wrong about this, you know, everything could collapse tomorrow. And of course, it could go to zero. This isn't financial advice. But as far as me, I'm looking at this and thinking to myself, probably not a great time to sell. Some people say, well, I'm going to sell now and get out because I think that's going to totally collapse and I'm going to buy back in. You can try that. But it seems like every time the market is saying, hey, I'm going to do this, it does the exact opposite. So those are the data points. Do with them what you will. And then lastly, before we get into the little q and I just want to with this out is that as far as like degenerate stuff, I put out a video yesterday because I got a lot of questions about how to buy Bitcoin runes, which runes are essentially tokens on the Bitcoin layer one solution. I put that on Dan Degen because it's a risky play. And uh, you can check that out as a link in the description. And then also I'd like to draw your attention to Tuker Carlson, which is a Solana meme coin based on a show that they do, which is sometimes quite hilarious. And it's on X and it's on YouTube and you can check it out here. And it's just actually quite early. So this would be one of the most degen plays you can possibly get. Let me just think about that in the comment section. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That concludes everything we want to talk about as far as the news and the macro events and selling.